With Seiko dabbling more in the arena of GMT watches with last year's attainable SSK collection of Seiko 5 GMTs, as well as the elevated prospects SPB381 within the Lux collection, many enthusiasts have called for a GMT version of the beloved Alpinus field watch. In an emphatic answer to its fans, Seiko recently unveiled the new prospects Alpinus mechanical GMT taking so much of what we know and love from the modern Alpinist collection while neatly integrating an intriguing in-house GMT caliber. Now, despite the modern prominence of its diving collection for both enthusiasts and the mass market, Seiko's background with field watches actually dates back even further, with its origins dating back all the way to 1913 with the Laurel. While the Alpinist name officially entered the catalog sometime in the 1950s, the Alpinist that jumps to mind for most enthusiasts is likely the Saab 017. I now discontinued JDM reference that rose to legendary status among enthusiasts backed by a dual crown design, an internal compass bezel, a cathedral handset, and a striking green dial which lives on with the current reference SPB121 while adding the upgraded 6R35 caliber. But almost as long as there have been Alpinist fans, enthusiasts have called for a GMT version of their beloved Alpinist to serve their real or maybe more often imagined outdoor adventures across time zones. When Seiko's new 6R54 GMT caliber was announced alongside the Prospects SPB381, 383, and 385, offering that extended 72 hours of power reserve, it seemed like the perfect candidate for an Alpinist GMT. And sure enough, quickly after, Seiko followed up with the blue dial SPB377 and black dial SPB379. Now, as we look at this watch, Seiko also has been busy releasing some other models within the Seiko 5 collection that are great bangs for buck. First, we have the SRPK17. This is a retro-inspired Seiko 5 with the old school logo, cool bracelet, and 39 and a half millimeter case. We also have three new Seiko 5 GMTs, including the SSK017, the SSK019, and the 021, including a yellow dial, two-tone, and a somewhat of a Pepsi format, and also a funky bunch looking back to the mid 20th century here with some of their designs with the SRPK09, SRPK011, and then the 013, featuring a variety of dial colors, unconventional rotating bezels, and pops of color throughout. These all just recently hit the shop at teddybaldasar.com. So if you want to get lost, shop around. We have, I think, well over 65 different references from Seiko. You can check it out down below. Now, starting with the aspect that made these watches possible, let's begin by discussing this intriguing new caliber. Now, as mentioned, the 6R54 debuted earlier this year within the 1968 Diver's Watch Reinterpretation GMT collection. Building upon the 6R35 platform that offers an extended 70 hours of power reserve while operating at three hertz, the 6R54 adds a couple more hours to bring the reserve up to three days or 72 hours, Sega's longest for a mechanical caliber. While that is all well and good, it is important to point out that this is going to be an office GMT, meaning it features an independently adjusted 24 hour hand, as opposed to the local hour hand, as is the case with Traveler GMT watches. While some would have appreciated a Traveler GMT in a watch like this, the 6R54 is a solid caliber offering extended power reserve still, as well as Seiko's longstanding reputation for reliability and durability. In this case, it's also in view beneath an exhibition case back. And while the finishing is as utilitarian as it gets around this price, the caliber Caliber does present some brushing across the central bridges, a hit of polishing or two, and a gold tone rotor just to spice things up. Taking a look at the caliber specifications, it's running at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stop in the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and power reserve of 72 hours. Another area where people do criticize these movements is going to be the quoted accuracy standards provided by Seiko, which come between minus 15 and plus 25 seconds for these movements. Now, speaking anecdotally, we wanted to test out both of them. The SPB 377 kept time at minus 11 to minus eight seconds a day with the SPB379 managing plus three to plus eight seconds a day, with both being tested across five different positions. Seiko's accuracy can be hit or miss, but it generally does exceed their quoted standards. Digging into the case and wearing experience presented by the Alpinist GMT, we have a dimension set that is more or less carried over from the rest of the modern Alpinist, including the SPB121. Measuring 39 and a half millimeters in diameter and 46.3 millimeter lug to lug, the only area of novelty to note here is going to be the thickness, which measures at 13.6 millimeters in its case, as opposed to 13.2 for the non-GMTs. For me, this watch wears relatively true to size or very close to it, as 
a result of the real estate being occupied by the bezel, presenting an excellent middle of the road option for all but the largest and smallest wrists out there. Set between 20 millimeter lugs, the Alpinist GMT in both of these instances leans into leather straps equipped with 18 millimeter milled deployant clasp. For what it's worth, these watch straps are going to have an opposite orientation than normal with the tail end of the strap making its appearance on the six o'clock side of the case, an easy switch if you desire to do so. While these straps are absolutely adequate, the quality of the material itself isn't great and I probably would be swapping these out for a third party option. Case finishing is also straightforward beyond the addition of the stainless steel bezel with the engraved and filled 24 hour markings, evoking watches like the Rolex Explorer 2. With a sloping top, the bezel's underside also tapers towards the central case while offering a polished finish. Just beneath, the central case has vertical brushing across the top leading into a slender polished bevel and polished curvaceous case sides. At three, a six millimeter screw down crown is unsigned but does present prominent ridges for easy access and works with the crown at four and ensuring the watch is capable for 200 meters of water resistance. The secondary crown allows rotation for the compass bezel. And while I think a compass bezel on a watch isn't necessarily the most useful thing in the world, it does theoretically add a measure of wayfinding capability. You might be asking, how does it work? With your watch set to the correct time and not adjusted for daylight savings time, you simply hold your watch level and align the hour hand with the sun's position in the sky. In the Northern hemisphere, the spot halfway between the hour hand and the 12 o'clock position is south. In the Southern hemisphere, that same spot would be north. After figuring this out, you then would rotate the compass bezel to match the established position for south and north and be able to generally set a course from there. Set beneath the safety of a dome sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on its underside, the Alpinist GMT showcases a dial design that feels close to its predecessors while neatly integrating the new GMT functionality. Originally presented in two colors with standardized production, the blue dial SPB377 offers a metallic dark blue primary surface with a shimmering sunray effect. And on the other reference, the SPB379, it opts for more of a glossy blue black dial. In either case, the core Alpinist design elements are all here, starting with the internal rotating compass bezel at the outskirts that is color matched with the dial and complete with printed compass markings. Just within and set ever so slightly below the level of the central dial, a minute track provides linear graduations along the rectangular markings at the five minute positions. Moving in, raised metallic indices create contrast from the dial surface with a matte finish effect with stylized Arabics at 12, 3, 6, and 9, and trapezoidal markings for the other hours. At 4.30, Seiko has provided a proportionally smaller circular date aperture, revealing a color match date disc lying underneath. And this being an Alpinist, the handset is executed in polished steel and of course is complemented by an additional GMT hand with its own red arrow tip. At 12, Seiko's wordmark and Prospects X oppose the printed text at six, including the red GMT text, automatic three days speaking to the movement, and 20 bar referencing the impressive water resistance on display. While the luminescent material is in shorter supply here, in this case compared to many other more aquatic designs from Seiko, with lume only being present on the hands and the small circular plots that are almost hidden with the minute track, the performance is, as you'd expect, still excellent. So sometimes in watch collecting, there are these watches that you see for the first time and you say to yourself, you know, I see what they're trying to do there, but with adding that complication, it just doesn't work. And then other times you see brands that stick the landing so well that you begin to question how could it possibly take this long to create it? If I had to pick between two of these buckets, the Alpinus here that we're looking at has to be more as a part of the latter because this is just pretty seamless in terms of its fit. Now, a few of the points of criticism here have to be the strap because it does leave a lot to be desired, especially for a watch that's going above $1,000 in price. Secondly, with the influx of traveler true GMT watches, most notably with the 9075 from Miyota that has made it itself available down market even below this and operating at four hertz, there will be some disappointment with the movement for some. When it ultimately comes to these Alpinist GMTs, they certainly have some points of contention and you are paying a bit of a premium compared to the standard Alpinist pieces. But I do think these are some of Seiko's best attempts at creating a piece above $1,000 that delivers. I think of the SPB 143. I find this to be in that class in terms of just making sense. It delivers on many of the specs with its power reserve, water resistance, and fusing a GMT with a classic design that is a Hall of Fame level of seamlessness.
But all right, guys, that is my take looking at the new Seiko Alpinus GMTs. What do you think of this new collection from Seiko? Do you think they did a good job with the design of these pieces? I know this was something that was long awaited for many people, so interested to hear some collective thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. Also check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. Also how we're able to fund all of our productions here on this channel, travel across the world, do these factory visits, all the things of that sort is through selling watches on our site. So if you do wanna support the content, you are in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. We know you can buy watches essentially anywhere nowadays, uh, but it really means a lot to us, allows us to keep doing what we're doing here, and we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.